Leighton and Luke return to the hotel to ask Chelmy about the photo from the doctor's home. Unfortunately, it seems the inspector unwittingly scattered the photo scraps all across town. Following the inspector's trail, the pair sets out to recover the missing pieces of the photo. You know, Lane could just watch the previously on segment to look at all the pieces scattered about in that flashback right there to... And then he could piece them together in his mind or something like that. I don't know. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. Welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Speaking of diabolical... Oh, so I take it you do want to come inside and look around. Hmm. Um, no, I... Ah, oh, look at those red little cheeks. My, but you're so shy. Here, try out this puzzle. It'll relax you. Puzzle number 71. How old is she? A uh, very appropriate question for this situation. A boy and a girl are chatting at a local cafe. Looking up from his coffee, the boy says, You know, I'm 20 now, but back when I was an, as old as you are now, you were half my current age. Neat, huh? As you can see, this boy isn't the most concise of speakers, but using what he said, how old is the girl he's chatting with? No one in this game is a concise speaker, because they all speak in puzzles. Uh, and I don't know what's up with me, all these burps right now. Hint number one. Start by figuring out how old the girl was back when the boy was old as the girl is now. What relationship does the girl's past age have with the boy's current age? Hint number two. Maybe you already picked up on this, but if you double the girl's age from back when the boy was the girl's current age, you should get the boy's current age of 20. Hint number three. Using the facts in hint two, you could ascertain that the girl was 10 back when the boy was the girl's current age. Since then, X years have passed, then the boy has become 20, and the girl has become her current age. If you could find a number of that of years that, when added to 10 and subtracted from 20, yield the same age, you are very close to figuring out the girl's current age. Now, what could X be? My head hurts! The answer is 15. I don't know what, is it, what it is with me and drawing really crummy fives, but whatever. Apprentice strikes again. Nice. A careful read of puzzles reveals that uh, so many words. What? What the fuck was that? Oh, you're a clever one. I love clever boys. They make me swoon. They honestly do. Tee hee hee. Clever? M me? Oh, you're getting all red again. That's just adorable. Come back anytime. And we got another diary key, so returning to this creepy place wasn't all terrible, I suppose. We found a new ore down in the ground that Father thinks we can refine into a precious metal. Personally, I doubt we'll be able to turn something as dull and dead as that rock into something of worth. Not that it stopped Father. The digging has advanced to the point where it's formed a massive crater under the castle. I have visions of the whole castle tumbling down into the abyss. And that would be rather unfortunate. So, what else are we going to do now? Basically, we have the opportunity to go and talk to everyone once again, because they're probably going to have a new puzzle for us. Except for this guy, who shows up right when I say that everyone's going to have a new puzzle for us. But, uh, she just wants tea. We go down here. I swear to God, if this guy... He's not here quite yet. I just want to go back there, because I know for a fact that down here, this guy should have something for us. Maybe I just misread the guide or something, but like it said a puzzle would pop up here eventually. Do we already do it and I'm just completely out of it? I have no idea, but I'm just gonna stop thinking about it because it's wasting so much stinking time. So what do we got now? We're supposed to be heading back to uh, the dog area, so I think that's when we're actually gonna start finding all these scrap pieces of paper, so I should stop diddly diddly diddy dilly dilly dallying and uh, talk to this guy again. Business has been slower than a one-legged turtle. With no customers, I really don't have much to do, you know. Do you have any other duties where, here besides watching the door? Yeah, little things. Just the other day, the boss, he tells me to make copies of the menu. He shoved them off to me because it's a pain to do. What do you say to help me fold these bad boys? Puzzle number 69! Copy the menu. I'm glad that he's the one who has puzzle number 69 because he had the very hilarious hat segment from before. The menu you see here has been folded into thirds with print on both sides, meaning in total there are six pages to it. 
The boss needs lots of copies, but your copy machine can copy a maximum of two adjacent menu pages at once. To save time, you want to complete a copy of the menu in as few passes through the machine as possible. What is the fewest number of passes through the machine you will need to make to create a full duplicate of the menu? Hint number one. Fold a creatively... Fold creatively and copy two pages at a time. Okay. AKA try. Hint number two. Just because a crease makes the menu sit one way doesn't mean you can't fold along this, that line in the other direction. Hint number three. As you fold any copy, make sure you arrange the two-page spread in a way that ensures you don't copy any one page twice. The solution is that you could create a full duplicate with just a three a passes, and that's a very crummy three. See if this okay, for that one, I was outright going out of my way to make it look crummy, but it's still funny that I recognized it. 2020! I wonder if I'll still be Let's Play in that time. Eh, probably. Good job if you fold the copy in a uh, menu shown above. You could make it to whatever. I'm gonna be really ticked off if I don't make it to the year 2069, honestly. Like, what's, what's even the point of going on if I can't live in a 69 era? Oh, so that's just how you do it. I was thinking I'd have to fold them all fancy style. There are probably nicer ways to do it. Are you sure that boss is okay with you doing it like that? Uh -huh, no one's gonna notice. Everyone usually busy picking what they want to eat. If you say so, mister. And we get 69 added to the menu. The puzzle menu. Uh, go in here. This guy has a puzzle for us as well. We're just finding all the hidden puzzles. Tell me, do you ever just get worked up to the nerve to wander out past the edge of town? The tales I've heard about what people see out there would make your blood run cold. I recently went out there myself to best... Take a few pictures with my best camera. What developed was, well, here, see for yourself. Puzzle number 96, the opposite of 69, a ghostly puzzle. I feel like even though the creator of the Layton Games was a very gentlemanly fellow, I feel like he knew what he was doing, putting 69 and 96 right next to each other. Yikes, there's a ghost in the forest, or so you thought, until you realized that the specter hovering in front of you was just a figure cut out of wood hanging from a branch. Looking around the area, you notice four pieces of wood scattered in the grass. Which of these wooden slabs was the ghost cut out from? You have four choices, A, B, C, or D. Beware! The correct board may have flipped over while lying in the grass. Hint number one. Think you found the answer? You're sure? Well, just to be safe, compare its outline to the ghost one more time. Don't forget to look at the little details like the shape of its hands. Hint number two. You should pay extra attention to the length of the ghost's tail. Hint number three. Make note of which way the ghost's arms should be facing. Oh, and just so you know, the board you're looking for needs to flip over to match the outline of the ghost. The solution is, once again, good old letter B. And for Boo! Huh, wonderful. Good eye, the ghost was cut from board B. The board must have flipped over as it fell to the ground. All the other boards have slight differences that set them apart from the go from the correct one. Hey, I thought you were going to show us a real ghost. <laughs> Sorry to get your hopes up, friend. I do love pulling that one on customers. Uh, it's the ultimate prank. Just be like, hey, you want to see a ghost? And then you whip out a puzzle and then they have to solve it. And they're like, oh, that was a cool puzzle, but I didn't get to see a ghost. How lame. Eh, whatever, just head out here. And continue on our merry, merry way. I don't know why I said merry twice, but what whatevs. I wanted to check in here real quick. Because, I don't know, something tells me that this guy wants tea. Something tells me that that guy would have a puzzle for us because we haven't spoken to him in a while. He's in a house. I think it's rather likely. Yes, it is. Mr. Rogers, what do you got? As much as I love antiques, I adore puzzles even more. I got a vintage puzzle I'd love to share with you if you would like to listen. Ooh, a vintage puzzle. We'd be honored to hear it. Wonderful. This puzzle involves a certain rare va vase or vase in my collection. It's on display right over there. Puzzle number 64, stones in a vase. Just trying to go through these kind of quickly so we can get back on with the main story. This vase holds 101 stones, each identical in size and feel. There are 50 black stones and 51 white stones. Now put on this blindfold, reach in, and pull out as many stones as you like. When you're finished, if you've removed an equal number of black and white stones, you'll receive a number of gold pieces equal to the number of stones you pulled out. 
How many stones should you remove to give yourself the best chance of removing equal numbers of stones when getting the most po many money possible? I can't read. Hint number one. Since the stones are the same size and feel, there is absolutely no way to tell them apart while removing them. Hint number two. The best shot you'll have at pocketing those coins is just around 50%. There's no way of ensuring you'll win the coins. Hint number three. Let's just think about this for a moment. Whether you pull out two stones or 100 stones, your chances of winning the gold are the same. Just about 50%. They're just hammering it in over and over and over. The solution is that there is no trick around it. You just have to pull out... How is that a seven? You have to... How is that a four? 100 stones. You need to pull out all of them. And now to test my theory. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Well done, if you remove 100 stones from the vase, only one will remain inside. If that remaining stone is white, it means you successfully removed 50 stones of each color. Of course, removing just 2 stones would give you the same chance of winning the coins as removing 100 stones. But the amount of money you receive for successfully removing 100 stones dwarves... Dwarfs the reward you'd receive for... I've never heard that used as a verb, but whatever. Deftly solved. You're quite the sharp one, aren't you? It's all these weird stinking words. I'm out of here. At least I got the puzzle taken care of. And uh, you got anything new for us? You do not. Uh, we're just gonna head on upwards now. And finally gonna go talk to that dog. Uh, if we could find out where he is again. Uh, there's the creepy lady again. She wants tea. Yeah, she's thirsty, alright. Thirsty for something else. And we got more characters. This is a new one, though. Oh, you actually don't look completely hideous. Why is everyone so quick to warn people away from the castle? I mean, what does it matter? The path there is blocked by the gate that's always locked. I take it that's the sole path to the castle then? Oh, so you actually want to go there, huh? It's a weird little scary place, but I understand the feeling. The gate does open once a day to let this old carriage through. If you hit in the bushes, you might be able to sneak in with that thing. So the gate does open. Do you know anything about the carriage? You got me there, but it heads up to the castle every day at about the same time. But hey, now that you've reminded me, would you mind helping a girl with a puzzle? Got puzzle number 120, Tug of War. Teams of horses are participating in Tug of War matches. All teams are drawn from an eight horse stable. The first three matches end in a draw. If you want the fourth match to result in a draw as well, which horses should be on the team pulling against E and F? Tap your picks. Here are the previous matches that ended in draws. Match 1 had A, B, C, and D versus E, F, G, and H. Match 2 had H, C, and B versus G, and A. And match 3 had D, and A versus F, H, and E. Hint number 1. There's no need to do any complicated calculations. The same horses complete, compete several times, and since a tie means the teams are equal, think about what might happen with different matchups. Hint number 2. You can think about the results of the first and third matches in the following way. A, B, C, and D equals E, F, G, and H, and D and A equals F and H and E. If you make some substitutions, you could up the, you could come up with the following B and C equals G. Hint number three. Take the information from hint two and results from the second match together to infer the following. H, C, and B equals G and A, B and C equals G. Make a substitution, we get H equals A. Use this to make a new team. I'm confused. The solution is that only horse D should be on the team. Here goes. That was almost too easy. What? No, it wasn't. Oh, that horse looks cute. That's a good little reward. Instead of pick red, you get a cute little picture of a horse. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> Thanks a bunch. Well, I was saying, if you want to get through that gate, sneaking in with a carriage is your best bet. But you never know what kind of dangerous stuff could be hiding in the woods, so I say stay here. And we get a diary key from her, thank you. Go ahead and check that out. Today is a day to celebrate. At long last, the girl I love has agreed to give me her hand in marriage. I must begin preparing for her arrival at once. I'll gladly change out of the castle's decor if it will make her feel more at ease here. I'm also commissioning a special dress to be made for her. She's going to look stunning in it. I just know it. I'd really like to know who this diary belongs to, but some of you may have an idea. Maybe, maybe not. Guess only time will tell. 
I uh, guess we're gonna go uh, to the left first. Uh, this girl's new. Er, is she new? Uh, she looks familiar, but then again, I have played this game before, so maybe I just remember her vaguely. It's like, looks like the true daughter of Professor Layton. Uh, Dad's shop is sm so smelly that I have to play out here or I'll pass out. That really, um, stinks. It's okay, I bought snacks with the with me to nimble on, so at least I'm not bored. Here, we could share them. That's number 75, Candy for Five. And in the UK version, it's called Sweets for Five. Riveting. You have a box of four different kinds of delectable candy arranged in no particular order. Your job is to divide these treats into five equal portions using your stylus. To do so, you need to make sure each portion contains the exact same number and variety of snacks. Furthermore, all the sweets in a single portion must be connected to each other vertically or horizontally, but not diagonally. Got it? Good. Then get started. Hint number one. First, count out how many sweets you have. There are five pieces of three types of candy and ten pieces of a fourth type. You type... You have to put two pieces of this fourth type of candy into each of the five portions. Hint number two, look for sweets that are one per portion. In other words, varieties of candies that number five pieces in all. If you find two of these candies next to each other, you can draw a line through where they connect, since they can't exist in the same portion. Start by drawing in these lines. Hint number three, do you see that the three pieces of the same variety of candy in the third row? The leftmost two pieces are the part of a single portion. The third of those three pieces and the identical piece of candy directly below it are part of a different portion. Now that you know that much, you shouldn't have too much trouble finishing this puzzle. At least that's what you say. Uh, the solution is uh, with line drawing this time. Uh, let's go do this. Um... <laughs> That's good for the first one. Uh, then draw this down here. Get that little remix in there that we don't get to hear all that often. So I guess it's okay that we are taking our time with this. And I think we should be good to go with it looking like this. Hmm. Let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Sweet! The puzzle solution is shown above. Now remember, those candies are for everyone, so don't forget to share. Yay, it's all divided up now. Here's some for you. Wait, you said it was candy for five. There's only three of us here. Uh, I guess Sulu technically could be our fourth. And then maybe me, the commentator, is the fifth. How wonderful. Crunch, crunch. Blech, blech. These candies all taste like raw garlic. See, I guess all the garlic in the shop made my snacks all weird. I'll have to throw them out. Well, at least we got to see Luke uh, spaz out for a bit, because that's always fun. Speaking of the garlic shop, you got any puzzles for us? Okay, they've been piling all the, on the puzzles uh, in this chapter, it seems. It's like it's just sort of trying to throw them all at us at once before... Not before that game ends. We're not near the end. It's just that, like... Well, I don't know. We're in chapter 6 right now? So... Hmm... And there's only seven chapters, so maybe we are kind of edging towards the end. Is it six or five? Doesn't even say. I think... No, it's five, right? We're in chapter five. I don't know. Uh, the Malaman is back, but he doesn't have a puzzle for us. Uh, friendly neighborhood postman Parcel is at your service. Hi, uh, Mr. Parcel. I've been wondering, why do you come here all the way out here? Leave me, kid. I'd love to tell you, but that's a secret between the folks of Full Sense of Dropstone. It's not really my place to gossip about their affairs. And that's all he has for us. That's all she wrote. Head back down here. I wonder if the guy up in the tower has a new puzzle for us. Probably does. Survey says no. Uh, he just tells us about the tower again. Cutting away. Uh, back over here, we got... Uh, we never went this way, but should we? Oh wait, we can't. This place gives me a bad feeling. Who even knows what's down this path anyway? From what I can see, it's just an expanse of wilderness. Let's leave it be for now. I have vague memories of that place. I think it has a really nice, nice. I think it has a really nice song in it, but we can't go there for now. And I keep going in all the ways I've already been to. 
I always get to where I'm going by walking away from where I've been. Everyone's in such distress about not having a spot of tea. We'll let them suffer for now because I don't have all the ingredients yet. Uh, we're getting close to completing all of those, but we don't have it quite yet for any of those mini games. So again, we're just going to hold off for now. That bulldog is blocking our path to the northeast corner. Hmm, how to get through? Feed Sulu to him! I don't know. Our friend the bulldog seems to have changed his temperament since we last met. Rawr, rawr. Looks like he's really hungry, Professor. I think he'll let us pass if we bring him a snack. Very well. I seem to remember a grocer beneath the watchtower. I'm sure we can find a suitable snack for our friend here. The Professor and Luke decide to visit the local grocer. Grocer? I just met her. So, are you talking about the garlic guy? Uh, hopefully he'll be on our map. He'll be like, go here. Well, here's a restaurant. Are you going to give us anything? Uh, it doesn't look like it. We went in here already, right? Uh, yes, that was the guy who gave us like the ghost puzzle. So let's go back to the garlic place, because that's the only place I could remember that had food involved. Uh, we're just going to go to the left. To the left, to the left. Every okay, yeah, it says go there. I could read the screen on the bottom of the screen thing, but I can't improv a song to save my life. But garlic? You think a dog's going to want garlic? Hello there, gent. How can I help you? Oh, wait, it was Wario's voice. I can never be consistent with the minor character voices. We're in desperate need of food for a hungry dog. Do you have anything that fits the bill? Well, let's see. The most interesting request I've heard all day. I don't have any kibble or the like, but this leftover beef shank ought to make Rover sit up and beg. That should do nicely. Would you mind parting with it? Not really, but I hope your dog likes garlic. I'm sure that won't be a problem. Good, good. Now I won't charge you for it, but would you mind solving this puzzle I've got here? I've been chewing it over for days, and I'm starting to lose sleep. I'd love it if I could just pay for things by solving a puzzle. Puzzle number 74. P.U. Well, there's technically no dots in between those, so I guess it's just POO. In the UK version, it's called Sealing Off the Smell. I don't know why they went to such lengths to change it, but whatever. Garlic is a wonderful seasoning when used in moderation, but the smell can be pretty potent. Something put garlic. Someone put garlic cloves in this intricate container, and they're really stinking up the room. Use the two corks below to help our friend deal with the smell. Touch an opening to put a cork in it. You could use no more than two corks. I don't know why, but I always love the word cloves. Hint number one. Use the memo function to trace which openings in the container lead to the garlic bulbs. Hint number two. Hmm, something seems strange, you say? Why, well, yes, the fact that all three openings in the container connect to the garlic is a bit strange. How to contain the smell, then? Hint number three. You don't have enough corks to stop all three of the openings in the container. Well, you'll just have to look up for another set of openings to seal off from the smell with the two corks. Oh my god, I just remember the solution. Uh, I'm not even going to look, scroll down and look at it, because this was so stinking hilarious when I saw it for the first time. So you could put corks in here if you want to, but you only are allowed to use two of them. So which two holes would block all the smell from this guy's nostrils, you would say? By putting them in his nose to begin with. It's stinking hilarious. And like when I found that for the first time, it was amazing. Oh my god, it's so stinking funny. Ah, oh, sweet relief. Each of the three holes in the container is connected to the garlic, so there's no real way to seal off the container using two corks. With no way to contain the smell, our friend had, to, had no choice but to plug up his own nostrils. Hopefully he had the good sense to stay inside where no one could see him like that. <laughs> oh my god, I always love like when there's just a really weird, outlandish answer like that. But only when it's in moderation, like that puzzle said, because in Lady Layton, like, every stinking puzzle is a stinking trick question puzzle and so stinking horrible. Uh, we got a bone in roast. You can find it in, in our trunk, I guess. We got also an ingredient for tea with garlic. Okay. Gotta deliver that roast to the doggy. Let's go over here. See if I can find my way back. Okay, I guess I can because I don't know how directions work. 
Uh, if we go over here, it's good. So I probably shouldn't be saying this because I'm sure you're all sick of hearing me say this. In Hello, this is a new guy. Hopper, you've gonna wear your souls out if you keep running around like that, fellows. Rest your feet for a minute while you solve this puzzle of mine. I thought he was gonna give us like a fast travel system. Puzzle number 113, a stack of dice. You stacked three dice in a column. At the points where the two dice touch, the faces that are touching add up to five. If one visible face of the bottom die is showing a one, what number must be on the top face of the top die? In case you were wondering, each die is identical, and all sets of opposing faces on each die add up to seven. Hint number one. At the two points where, you, where the two dice touch, the sum of the two faces making contact equals five. If that's so, then each of those four faces must be a number between one and four. Hint number two. The options for the top face of the bottom die are limited. That face can only be two, three, or four. Hint number three. Assume for a minute that the top face of the bottom die is a four. If so, then the bottom face of the middle die must be one, which would make the top face of the second die a six. Now that you've ruled out one possibility, as this cannot be the answer. The solution is that the number 6 is on the top face of the die, so we are going to put a 6 and call it a day. Well, they call it a die! Huh, wonderful. A true gentleman never misses an opportunity to make a bad pun. You're no slouch at this, so what's the story? What do you think you're going around here finding full sense? I don't mean to sound ominous, but their truth's best left unburied. You get me? Left unburied. We got another hamster toy. Another Mario block. Yeah, you get some uh, duplicate toys, in case you're wondering. So even if you have um, all of the things filled up in the row, we do need some duplicates. Though we might just be missing those last two, actually. So we'll be getting to finally take care of our hamster at long last. But uh, yeah, I know you're probably sick of hearing me say this, but I kind of want to record the rest of the LP in this one sitting. I was hoping to finish the recording this Let's Play during my spring break, and today's the last day of the spring break. Uh, just things kind of got complicated, so I wasn't able to record in moderation throughout the entire week-long break like I was hoping I would. But the game has been going by rather quickly, so maybe we'll be able to get through it just fine. Rough, 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 rough. Here's our chance, Luke. Toss him that beef shank. I'm already on it. Here goes. Rose? Sniff, sniff. Oh, he looks so adorable. <laughs> but why is he wearing a diaper? I don't get it. I think our little offering did the trick. Woof, woof. I don't think this puppy's going to be doing any snarling anytime soon. We can finally explore the rest of town now. The professor and Luke decide to gather photo scraps in the northeast alley. Hey, that was actually somewhat uh, new information. Well, not new information, but it was just worded differently to where it wasn't repetitive. Where it was like, I think we can finally go into that alley and find the photo scraps. And then popped up and was like, Professor and Luke, finally go into the alley to find the photo scraps. So what do we got in here? We got 15 scraps we got to look for. Thankfully, we don't have to go and solve a puzzle every time we find one. We could just find them on the floor and grab it piece of this photograph, I'd say so. Sharp eye, Luke. I'll place it in the trunk for safekeeping. Okay, I assume we'll have to rearrange them once we get them all, but I'll wait till we actually have them all before we start rearranging that thing. Uh, let's see what we got. We got two coins right there, and our third one is nowhere to be found. Cool beans. Got a puzzle for us, lady. Oh wait, nope, we got a hint coin though, and a puzzle. I don't like to brag, but I make the best pancakes you've ever tasted. Guaranteed. Oh, God, I just realized her eye. My God, that's creepy. Thing is, that while the flavor is out of this world, I have trouble getting the size consistent. Serving them is such a pain because you need to stack up just so. Here, I'll show you. Sounds like a repeat puzzle or sequel puzzle, whatever you want to call it. Puzzle number 83, Pancake Stacks 2, Electric Boogaloo. Now here's a tasty puzzle for you. Your task is to get, basically, we've seen this before. I probably don't need to read this. Uh, I also don't think I need to read the hints because it's sort of like a sliding puzzle when you think about it. So I'm just going to go about it the old fashioned way, I guess, by doing it. <laughs> I guess that's what you call old fashioned. I don't know. So we're going to do that. Oh, there's four pancakes this time. Okay. Up in the ante, I see. Uh, can we... I don't think we could put a big pancake on top of, like, 
a smaller one, so we get to do that. And then go and do that. To move that over there. Then this right here. And you want me to put this one right here, so that we could finally put the big boy on the bottom. And then after that, put this right here. And we'll do this right over there. This there. This there. This there. This there. I'm good at commentary. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Yummy, did you notice that you could solve this puzzle in as few as 15 moves? Uh, sure. Wow, your hands move so fast there. It looked like you were juggling those flapjacks. So, like, with puzzles, do you actually whip out the thing that the puzzle's about to make us do it in person? Or is it, like, on a piece of paper? I never understand. Next time I'll throw pancakes on the griddle, you're welcome to help it. To a heap and helping of them. Now I just want pancakes. And we're so, so close to having all the hamster toys. I just want to make sure, like, we got all the duplicates. Uh, let's see. Uh, for hamster toys... There are two apples, two blocks, two pet houses. Oh, uh, no, we need one more surprise box and one more jack in the box. Uh, is this even a. This tells us a surprise box. And we don't even have a jack in the box yet, so I just spoiled what one of the final. Pre what the final present's going to be. So we need two jack in the boxes, a surprise box, and that'll be it. Okay. I was gonna be like, let's continue the episode until we get all of them, but nah, we probably should end it now. I was hoping to get all the. Uh, painting piece or picture pieces in this episode, but probably not going to have it because we're already at 33 minutes. I'll just grab this then, since there doesn't seem to be anyone here. Hmm, don't worry, Luke. It looks more or less intact. Got 13 pieces. And I think this will be a good time to end the episode off. Next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, we'll continue making our way down this creepy alley. Not Kirsty Alley. And we will hopefully find all of the missing pieces of paper. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night. Found it!